And now joining me here on March Madness, March Madness 365, Bruce Pearl, the head coach of Auburn, my number one this week. AP went with Gonzaga. I can see the argument both ways, but I don't think there's any doubt. No one is playing better basketball than Auburn. Great road wins last week uh, over rival Alabama at Ole Miss. Great atmospheres. Uh, Bruce, let's first start with where this team is at at this point in the season. How would you assess where your team is? I mean, we don't have a lot to complain about, right? Um, we've gotten a lot better from the beginning of this season, which is what you want every team, every team to do. Uh, a lot of new pieces, but the guys became great friends, um, competed to establish roles, um, and then, you know, just have worked hard to try to buy into the game plan and buy into what they do best. And, uh, you know, right now we're playing pretty well. But like you said, it's early, and, and there's a lot of basketball left. You know, it's interesting, and I've talked to so many of the, your peers around the country, it really can be a bit of a crapshoot in terms of when you take the transfers. Some have worked out great. Some have taken more time. Um, it just feels like, and even with high-profile freshmen, your pieces fit and they're working out, which I, obviously you would have liked that to happen, but you couldn't project it. What did you see when you put this together, especially with the combination of Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, which has worked out very well? Yeah, no, I, a couple of things. I mean, we part of it is having recruited guys for a long, long time. So Jabari Smith recruited him for a long time. Walker Kessler, Katie Johnson. Uh, those are you know, all Georgia kids that were recruited for a long time. So we knew them and we knew their history and we knew their strengths and we knew their potential. And then in addition to that, you know, we did, I think we did a good job of taking an Eastern Kentucky five foot 10 Wendell Green, who we saw something special in. Um, my coaching staff did a great job evaluating, you know, tape after tape after tape, talking to coaches in the Ohio Valley who all said, man, this kid's got a little something special. I don't know if he can defend at the SEC. You know, I don't know if he can play a little point guard, but we've always had undersized point guards at Auburn. It's worked out well. And then Zeb Jasper from the College of Charleston, another mid-major guy that just plays so hard and is so unselfish, not afraid of the moment. So every one of those five new pieces have worked out really, really well for us. You know, and it's interesting you mentioned those two guys coming up from sort of one-bid leagues. Uh you know, they have to take on a different role. And, you know, like I think of, of a player like Tyson Walker, who was, you know, at Northeastern, big time shot maker, and Izzo needed him to be a distributor. And it took some time. And now he's doing that. Um, when you had to recruit those guys, knowing that they had much more responsibilities at those previous stops, how did you get them to say, look, that's not what you're going to do here if we're going to be successful? Well, I still want Wendell uh, Green to be interesting, him and Zepp play the both point guard position. Uh, Wendell's got to score. He's got to be himself. For me, it's actually the other way around. Okay. I want I want Wendell to be himself. I want him to go to his strengths. I want him to shoot if he's open. I want him to go downhill and create. I want Zepp to be himself. He's going to be the same position. He's just not going to turn over. He's not going to take chances. He'll be solid, and he'll be incredible on the defensive end. The biggest adjustment, though, Andy, to comment what you're saying, is just is – just, the, the, the night the physicality night in and night out you know there's a difference when you're playing northeastern or michigan state and you're playing the big 10 you know versus you know the, the colonial uh as far as just a, you got a guard you got to rebound your position and so when you're dealing with undersized players uh, that, that that and but that's why a lot of coaches won't take those smaller guys they don't bother me so jabari clearly has worked out um you know one of the best players in the country regardless of class what did you see in him that told you, yeah, he could be a star? Well, I mean, he he probably in the gym every morning at 6 a.m. at his high school. So, I mean, what happens, Andy, is people look at guys with talent and they think that it's just simply God just blessed them and they got advantages over me, then oh, he's six ten. No. When, when, when the other kids were getting up or thinking about, you know, going to McDonald's before school, this kid was in the gym. This kid was in the weight room. This kid was working out with his coach five or six mornings a week. And so that work ethic complying with the talent. Um, what I didn't know is I had no idea how competitive he was. I didn't know how tough he was. And I didn't know that he had a, an inner confidence that, uh, that is way beyond his years. He is still 18. He, he won't be 19 until May. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a special uh, uh, as I've ever had. You know, it's interesting. I think about your team a couple of years ago that got to the final four. 
Um, that team just got better and better and better and was not as hyped in the preseason, similar to this one. Look, I know every team is different within its own vacuum of each season, so it's hard to compare. But in terms of the growth of the teams, what similarities are you seeing between the two? This team here had a lot more ground to cover from the beginning of the season to the end. That, that team that went to the Final Four had some returning pieces um, you know, from, a, from a, a pretty good team that won the SEC championship in the regular season the year before. This is, this was, this is a brand new group. And so they've had a long, they've had a, got a lot better now. That team that went to the Final Four got hot at the end. We were 12 and 0 in March. And now, what, what's going to happen to this team? What's the ceiling on this team? You know, right now we're really good in January. Can we continue to get better? Will we get hot? Will we stay healthy? All those things. You know, the funny thing is, Andy, there are still six or seven teams that could win our league. There are still eight or nine teams that still could go to the tournament out of our league. There's so much basketball to be, you know, played. But obviously, to this point, we're pleased with where we are. And I'll be honest with you. I'm, you didn't ask the question, but I'll tell you, I'm disappointed that we're not number one right now. We have the best record against the quad one and two. We beat Alabama at Alabama. You know, Gonzaga, who's ranked ahead of us, lost to him in Seattle. Um, we, we're five and zero on the road. Gonzaga's won the one game road game they've played. So sometimes I think just like when you guys, you know, do the seating of the tournament and you take the name off of the school, sometimes things work out a little differently. Well, look, I was going to ask you that. So I'm glad you answered that. Um, you know, to that point, what I loved about last week, and that to me is what told me without question to me, Auburn should be one is the beauty of the SEC this season, and it usually is like this, but it, it feels bigger right now because of last year with no fans. The games I've watched, there's been great fan support, especially when you guys have come into the gym. Clearly, Kentucky gets that as well. But yeah. the atmosphere is at Alabama and at Ole Miss. We're rocking, and your guys did not wilt. Uh, they withstood the punches. You know, there were leads, and you guys came back and finished the job. Yep. How would you describe yeah. the way your group has handled these situations so early in the season? I, you know, I feel bad, like on the West Coast, when the, when the students aren't in the building or, you know, they're not, the fans aren't in the stands. I mean, you're right. The atmosphere at Alabama was fantastic for both schools. Same thing with Ole Miss. And, um, and, and these kids are getting that experience that, you know, that you just, you, you'll never forget. These atmospheres, you know, Andy, when you were and I were growing up and the Big East was getting started and Madison Square Garden, what made it with, you know, the teams and the coaches, but obviously the fans and the atmosphere. So, yeah, the SEC right now has got it going on. Let me let me just clarify one thing. I don't know. I, there could be 20 teams in the country better than us. OK, right now, I, like and I don't know whether they're going to finish first or fifth in our league right now. All I'm saying is right now, based on our resume right now. We should be number one. That does not mean we're the best team. We oh, no, I agree. Team, but that's Look. that's. So I want to make sure that that that's clear. Um, because because you know we got. I have too much respect for all the other teams because Jaga could beat us by twenty, and and they have. But right now, right now we deserve to be number one. And, and I agree with you because to me that's the snapshot uh, for rankings, not seeding. To me, it's who's playing well enough this past week to rank them one, two, three, four, etc. All right, last two things. First off, the way in which your staff and your team have dealt with adversity. Uh, you had to sit a couple, you know, you had to sit a couple games. Last year, you guys weren't able to play in the postseason. I know not everyone on this team was on that team, but how would you say this group has weathered the last year and a half to be in position now where you, the storm is behind you? Yeah. You know, all that is behind you. You're going forward and you got a team that can certainly compete for the national championship. Andy, worry about what you can control. You know, it's all you can worry about. Focus on the job at hand. Focus your responsibilities to work with young men. You know, our whole thing here at Auburn, you know, go about our business every day and do the things that will give God a chance to bless you. Can we continue to get better and, and, and win? And as far as the last, you know, this year, it's been a four year situation where, you know, we've been sort of under a microscope and having to deal with distractions. You know what? We haven't stopped, let that stop us from competing, from graduating kids from doing, you know, for doing our job. And so I'm very, very proud of my coaching staff. I got, man, if anybody's got a better coaching staff in the country, uh, they got a great staff. I'm serious. I'm just playing, you know, Wes Flanagan and Ira Bowman and Stephen Pearl and 
Mike Burgermaster, Chad Pruitt, all my, my GAs and stuff like that. Just tell our guys do a fantastic job. All right. Last thing, Bruce, you tell me you're great in January right now. Don't know how good you're going to be in March and April. What needs to happen with this group to go, you know, continue to go up and shatter the ceiling and make a run? Well, you know, uh, there are things we can't control. Kentucky, I'm looking at Kentucky, Andy. This is as good a team as I think I played against. Uh, you know, that's a strong state. We've played against Cal for many, many years. We'll see. Uh, you know, they're fast. Got great point guard play. Got shooters dominant inside. This could be a great team. So we got to get by them and a couple other teams in the SEC. We got to do a better job, continue to execute better offensively, continue to lock into our roles, um, you know, and um, continue to play hard and, and play unselfishly. It, we're not going to be a situation where I worry about our guys starting to read their media posts and start thinking we're not who we are. We know who we are. And we know we, we're humble and we're hungry. Bruce, I appreciate it. Uh, as always, love our conversations. To me, you guys are number one. You'll get there. And you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. All right, Andy. Thank you. Take care.